In this video, we're going to complete the onCreate statement in our SQLite Open Helper subclass. OnCreate is invoked to create the schema of our database. In other words, the table and the st structure of the columns within the table. Now, a major warning about OnCreate is that it is called only one time. And that is, if we make a request to a SQLite database, and that SQLite database does not exist, it will call OnCreate only that one time. Afterwards, as soon as that uh, database exists, it won't call it, which means if we are changing the schema on our emulator, we're going to need to go in and delete that database file. If we're changing the schema on a live running application, uh, we have to be especially careful because remember SQLite means that the database lives on the device. Once you release your application, Hopefully you'll get thousands and thousands of downloads, but the trick is that means there are thousands and thousands of copies of data that you cannot control. So it's very important to plan the SQLite schema uh, for the future. Uh, a lot of times we say don't worry about future complexity until you need it, but in, in this case you typically want the database to be a few steps ahead of the code. You want to think down the road a few stories and think about how you can make a database that will work for today and also work for future functionality that you have planned. Now, SQLite Open Helper is a fairly straightforward database that's only meant to store a local copy of data. It's not meant to be a huge relational database. It's a simplified database. There's no real data types. The types are just inherent in the data itself. So it doesn't have a lot of the crazy th things that you would find in a truly relational database, but it's quite effective for making a database to hold just a local copy of data on your phone. So let's get started. I am in my offline plant DAO, which we created in an earlier video, and I'm going to go to this onCreate method. Let me expand so we can see it in high def. Now, we're going to need to know a little bit about SQL in order to make this method. And also we're going to want to do something that's a little bit painstaking, but trust me, it's worthwhile. We want to take all of our table names and column names and make constants out of them to reduce the chance that we'll misspell or mistype them. So uh, allow me to go ahead and get started on a create statement. I'll just say uh, string create uh, plants equals create Oops, table space plus plants plus open paren. Okay, now hang on a second. Why did I concatenate this when these were all just strings? Well, I'm going to make a constant out of this table name plants in case I want to use that table somewhere else. So I'm going to do that with each of my table names and column names. And then what I can do is I can right click refactor and I can say extract oops constant you see that took a while so control alt C is a quicker way to do that from now on we'll just do control alt C uh, plants that's fine and you see now what it's done take a look at the top here public static final string plants uh, equals plants okay and then it's replaced my string plants with this constant variable, well, constant it is, uh, called plants. That's going to be much easier in case I need to use this table name again, which I assure you I'm going to need to do. Now, after that, okay, we'll go ahead and accept the default proposal there. After that, I have uh, an open and closed parentheses in, in a, in a uh, double quote. I'll go ahead and terminate that line to get rid of the red line. Within this, we're going to need to do a couple things. Let me put a, another semicolon there to terminate the uh, parens. But within this, we're going to need to put a list of fields and suggested data types that should belong in our plant table. This is where I say you really need to plan this one ahead. You need to think, uh, maybe think of some future stories and think about which columns you want to have in your table. In our case, it's going to be fairly straightforward, and here's why. We are going to use a JSON data feed. Uh, for instance, here is a JSON data feed for all redbud trees. I could change that to oak 
We'll see a bunch of oak trees. I could change it to maple and so on and so forth. So this is a JSON data feed. It's already been created by me. It's already structured data. If you're good with JSON, you can see name value pairs here, ID, genus, species, cultivar common. Uh, if, J if that's a little bit confusing, don't worry. Just highlight, copy, control A, control C. Go to something like the JSON viewer, paste, which I've already done for you here. I've pasted in a JSON sample from the source page here. And then go to the viewer, and you see that we have a JSON variable, a plants array, and a plants array means it contains a collection of uh, basically objects of the similar type. And you see here we have 0 through 12, so a total of 13 plant objects. And if you take a look at these, each one has ID, genus, species, cultivar common. Okay, well that's a great start for our database. ID, genus, species, cultivar common, where ID is a global unique identifier. That's going to need to be an integer. The rest are essentially strings, but we do want to add one more column. The ID is a global unique identifier, which means take a look at this 83 and 1020, Circus canadensis eastern redbud and Appalachian red. Okay, that's an identifier that is known on the cloud. Okay, so if I go to plantplaces.com, if I search on redbud and I click on the uh, eastern redbud, you'll see that that global unique identifier appears right here in the URL. And you see that it says common name Eastern Red Bud Circus Canadensis. Now let's change this to 1020. And we should see that change to Appalachian Red Red Bud, which we do see right here. Okay, so that's a global unique identifier. But if you remember an earlier video I made, I talked about one of the advantages of SQLite is the ability to create and store data locally and synchronize it later. So we actually need two identifiers, the global unique identifier, and then we also want a uh, local identifier. And this is what we're going to call the primary key. So in the uh, create statement, the primary key will have this primary key identifier, and uh, we will add an auto increment as well. Okay, so here's the syntax to create a local primary key. ID, primary key, auto increment. Okay, so I go back to my source, and again, local means it's local to our, uh, to our local database. And I'm going to say, I'm going to do our, our little trick where we concatenate. Uh, so I'm going to say primary, well, let's just say we could call it cache ID if we want. We'll say cache ID because it's kind of like our local cache. And then I'm going to say uh, integer primary key auto increment. Okay, double check spelling on that one. And again, notice I'm splitting these strings into segments. Okay, so cache ID is kind of like our local identifier. It's an integer. It's a primary key, which means it must be unique. Auto increment means each time we insert a new row into this database, it's going to add one and come up with a new unique number for that row. That's what auto increment means. Okay. Remember our shortcut to extract a constant, control alt c and cache ID. Yep, that's fine. Yep. See, it's a lot faster when we use the shortcut like that. Okay. Now we're going to keep adding some more uh, columns. I'm going to put a comma after the auto increment, and I'm going to hit enter. I want to keep this. This is going to be a long string, so I want to put it on multiple lines. Okay, so next I'm going to say uh, genus, okay, plus double quote space text, comma, plus species, double quote, plus uh, space text, comma, space, okay, plus, now I know a lot of symbols there, but take a look, where I have column names, I'm not putting any spaces between the quotes. Where I have the column type, I'm beginning with a space, and then a comma, and then a space afterwards. So we don't want any spaces within the column names themselves. We do want spaces uh, on either end of the column name, and we're going to achieve that by putting a space before and after the data type. Okay, we're doing pretty well here. So, uh, Control-Alt-C, 
create a constant out of genus. Yeah, that's good. Control Alt C, create a constant out of species. Okay, that's good. Okay, and enter. Uh, cultivar and common, those are the two others that we want. So cultivar. Okay, cultivar, sorry, plus, and then space, text, comma, space, double quote, plus, double quote, okay, plus uh, common, or common name, whichever you prefer, plus, double quote, space, text, uh, one X in text, space, uh, and then we'll go ahead and just, uh, and we don't need a comma on that final text. We will go ahead and close paren there. Uh, you know, I do realize I missed one, though. I missed the global unique identifier. So let me add that. And I want to add that pretty early on. Uh, unique identifiers we just in practice tend to put is some of the first columns in a table. So I'm going to say GUID. Okay, plus. Now I'm going to say integer, comma, double quote, plus. Okay, uh, let's make a constant out of GUID. That's good. Yep, that's good. Let's make a constant out of cultivar. Okay. And a constant out of common. So that will pay off quite a bit in just a little bit when we do our insert statement, things like that. Now, one trick is we have to be really super careful on this line uh, because any mistake here, we're not going to see... Uh, until several videos from now. So I take the risk of making a mistake now and not seeing that mistake until later. So let's see. Uh, create table. That looks good. Plants is a constant. Yeah, and then, um, oh, you know what? See, probably don't need a space here, but gosh, I sure would feel better if I had one. So let's put a space. Cash ID, integer, primary key, auto increment, comma, space plus GUID, space, integer, comma, genus, co okay, uh, just taking a quick look, I see all my commas, I don't want a comma on the very end, but everything else looks okay. Now, if you take a look at the method signature, you'll see that a reference to the SQLite database is being passed in. So here I'm going to say db, whoops, take off caps, I'm going to say db.exec SQL, and I'm going to pass in create plans. Now, remember, this only gets called once. This onCreate statement only gets called once. Uh, and so if we add more tables into the future, we're going to want to call them from the same onCreate method. We don't want to have three different onCreate statements uh, for one database name. And by database name, I mean the second argument in our constructor. For that plantplaces.db, onCreate will be only called once universally. So if we have multiple tables, which we might want if we're going to do any kind of joining or relationship, uh, we want to make sure that we're creating all of those tables via one on create statement or one on create statement that delegates to others. So I think we're good here. We're going to go ahead and save this. And in our next video, we are going to take a look at inserting plants so that we can then fetch plants. So we'll make a new insert plants method. And we will take a look at the implement, implementation of that. I will see you then. Thank you.